Hi and welcome, I'm Bo and this is Bo and his bike. Today I'm going to be doing a long-term review of my white E160S, which I own for close to three years now. The bike has now covered six and a half thousand kilometers and it's been nothing short of amazing. Definitely the best purchase I've ever made. I'm back. I actually did make a list of things to talk about because there's quite a few. So let's start with a list of notable upgrades. So first thing I've changed was the shock because the stock shock was pretty poor. It definitely doesn't belong on this bike. So I got myself a Maitsoki Bomber CR which is about 155 millimeters of travel but it's a pretty basic coil shock it only has low speed compression adjustment and rebound adjustment i'm running it with 700 pounds spring because i'm a bit of a fatty as you can tell i didn't see a need of changing the fork it still has stock zap with charger damper with 160 millimeters of travel but the fork is spot on it's so plush and it takes big hits well as well I had Fox 38 on my other bike and I rate the Zep higher. Bear in mind if you get a new white from this year, so 2024 model, you are going to get the basic damper, which is not as good. So the next upgrade I did was the brakes. So it came with guide RE SRAM brakes, which are pretty poor in terms of maintenance. Stopping power wise, I couldn't fault them, but they started having your typical SRAM issues. So I decided to go for Hope Tech 4v4 and I'm running those with a 220mm floating rotor up front and 203mm vented floating rotor at the rear. Look at this beauty. The brakes was the second best upgrade. Basically, there's so much control on the steep stuff. You can actually tell the difference and I think I've become a better rider because of those brakes. Definitely a lot more control and a lot more modulation than with shrums. The other great thing about hopes is you can maintain them, you can buy every single part and just completely rebuild the brakes. The next forced upgrade was the handlebars. So I've managed to have a big crush at Farmer Jones and uh, bent the original stock handlebars otherwise I wouldn't be changing those but I've taken the opportunity and went for Spunk 35 Skyriser bars which have 60 millimeter rise it does help on the steep stuff and definitely on the tight switch bucks which is actually a great upgrade highly recommended in terms of wheels I'm still running stock wheels I just didn't feel a need of upgrading the wheels these are WTB i30 wheels and I'm running impact inserts both front and rear. In terms of tires I stuck with Asagaya for the front. Uh, this is the second uh, tire so it lasted pretty well and at the rear I'm currently running Continental script totals 0.4 in Enduro casing. These are really great and as you can see the, the side knobs are pretty much like brand new. However I've just noticed some side casing damage so this is something I have to take a look at. I've been experimenting with different saddles but ultimately I came back to the original one. This is actually a second saddle that I bought from eBay because the first one started to creak but it covered six and a half thousand kilometers so still good going. In terms of pedals I have a cheap DMR V11 pedals. Again don't see a point spending hundreds of pounds on pedals. One more notable upgrade has been the Bashguard which has paid for itself many times over now. So if you're getting a white, even the new ones that comes with the a sort of bash card, they are not very good. So I definitely recommend investing in something better like this. The bike has been in VZ frame from new, but as you can clearly see, it's got some battle scars. I'm running short versions of the Mug Hooger Mud Guards front and back. Next, let's cover any sort of faults I had with the bike. So the main one, which is actually pretty expensive one, was I'm now running a second motor. So the first one lasted roughly 6,000 kilometers. It packed up 11 months after the warranty, uh, but I've contacted Bosch and Bosch offered 50% discount on the new motor. So after some diagnostics, I've been told by a local bike shop that it was a short circuit uh, in the motor. Uh, as the fault it was coming up with. So it also needed a new pure display. So it was quite costly. The second notable fault was the freehub body has failed. So basically the bearings rotted so much that they integrated with an axle. Lee, thanks again for sorting that out for me. This was a 50 pound fix, so it's not too bad. And as it has never has been maintained, that's again a pretty good going. One other thing was the rear wheel needed respoking, but this is again probably because I'm a bit heavy and I like to case jumps and it costed me 90 pounds to do a full respoke. I had a one warranty repair. In the end, it was the 
motor mounts that needed stripping, cleaning, and putting back on. So that wasn't too bad. I think that's pretty much it. So other than those few bits and pieces, obviously motor being quite significant. The bike just handles everything you throw at it like a boss. You know, I've done some big drops. I had some big crashes. I had new crashes, which I probably got away with because of the bike and how stable it is. It's a heavy bike, but I think it's an advantage. So definitely on the steep stuff, when you're just plowing down, it just goes through everything like knife through butter. So to summarize, the bike was not in short of amazing it still gives me a buzz each time i ride it so if you're a fellow white bike owner let me know what you think about the bikes what do you own what upgrades did you make all that sort of stuff would be good to hear from you again thanks for watching